Hello everyone, Red and K here with the new episode of my Revolution 3 Let's Play Season 2. This is episode 2. Uh, last time we left off with me looking around for some lead. Couldn't find any. But yeah, between episodes I found some. It's a ways away, but at least I've got a safe, r a safe route to get there. So yeah, let's start off with that. Between episodes I got myself a bunch of um, materials from Batania, which, uh, which are actually pretty easy to get. And uh, yeah, I'm going to build my little industrial setup out of those. So let's, uh, while we're at it, let's just quickly have a look at A, this uncommon treasure bag that I found while I was um, working on things. Uh -huh. It's got a splash potion of instant damage, an apprentice ring of Terra. Yeah, nothing too impressive or too interesting. Speaking of rings, uh, in between episodes I turned my mana tablet into a band of mana, which also was the point at which I discovered that if you use a full mana tablet to make the band of mana, which, which requires one to make, you you get an empty band of mana. It doesn't transfer the amount of mana in the tablet to the band. I also made a band of aura, which very slowly generates a little bit of mana. Not much, but enough to make uh, my reserves last a little longer. So, anyhow, moving on to the, um, to the lead mine. It's pretty much where you'd expect it to be, under the house. Um, all the way at the bottom floor, because, you know, mine. I'm not going to put my mine right up against the surface. It kind of defeats the purpose. Anyway, it's down this way. Um, well, all the way down this way. As you can probably already see, it's a, on the map, it's a pretty long path. Then there's a turn left here. And then all the way at the end of this hallway, down this little staircase, is the lead mine. That's a long ways away. So yeah, I'm probably not going to spend much time in here. I have better places to spend my time. But I also discovered another thing. There's a whole bunch of iron veins around here as well. Iron is not going to be a concern for a very long time indeed. Also, there's a bunch of coal around here, in case I ever need an impressive amount of coal. Aside from digging around for lead and making a huge tunnel, I also did a bit more work on that um, crystal growth uh, farm. I kind of discovered that if you wait until one of these crystal one of those uh, large crystals at the top of the blooms it's got a small trail of particles inside but you have a slightly better chance of getting uh, seeds or crystals out of it. I also turned down the sound for the uh, mobs and such significantly because during editing I discovered that well there were multiple parts where I just could not be heard over them so yeah turned them down and going forward that should work a little better but yeah uh, looks like there's some kind of cave down there somewhere. Might deal with it uh, between scenes. Anyway, onto the meat of this episode. Like I said last time, I gotta get started with my uh, industrial setup again. So my first targets, again, are to get myself a an immersive engineering crusher and an immersive engineering uh, plate press. For that, I have set up this area right here. It's going to be two layers uh, large. And, well, I'm going to put the big stuff up here, so I've got easy reach to it. And on the bottom floor I'm going to put all the machines of one block. I know, it's kind of tiny and not really future-proof by any stretch of the imagination. But for now, it'll suffice. Anyway, this area here is going to be where I put my uh, water mills. As you can see, I've already uh, laid out a five. The sorry, a one, two, three. Oh, 
done. I made it one too big. Oh well, easy enough to fix. Anyway, this is where I'm going to put my uh, water mills. So, next step in the build? Get, uh, get that part ready. As always, uh, well, like last time, the water mills are going to be my initial source of power. Later on I might uh, get started with an immersive engineering um, biofuel uh, setup. And uh, after that, well, we'll see. I mean, this pack has a lot of things to offer in terms of uh, power gen, so it's not like I'm spoiled for choice. Anyway, for the uh, housing for the uh, water mills, I'm going to use this uh, granite here. Uh, granite, diorite, andesite and basalt are made with botania. You just uh, throw some uh, smooth stone into a mana pool with, um, with an alchemy catalyst under it and you're good. Oh right, and final thing I forgot to mention. I got rainbow trees now, so if I ever need ridiculous amounts of uh, dyes or some uh, golden apples for who knows what, I'm uh, I'm good. Anyway, I'm gonna get started building up that um, that housing for the water wheels, so I'll be back. Anyway, this is the uh, current state of the. Uh, water wheel housing that I've got. Uh, the housing, the water wheels will go like this into the housing. Water will flow over them, uh, starting here, going all the way around to here, and then the flow gets picked up by this by the next set of water wheels, where it, where it will go, sorry, where it will go from here to all the way around to here. So it, the water zigzags back and forth across the water wheels. Um, I'm going to have three sets of water wheels in one big tower, so I will have to build up the, uh, the front, sorry, the housing a lot further. But yeah, it's a good start for now, at least. Anyway, um, to connect the industrial building up with the rest of my house, all I really have to do is take down these six blocks here, and bam! I've got myself uh, a good connection to the main staircase. Uh, technically speaking, it's a bit off because normal most of the stuff for the house is in fact on the northern side of the staircase and the um, industrial building will be on the south side, but hey, means I'll have more space vertically here. Anyhow, I'll go back to building now. Uh, I'll have to dig down a lot, build up a lot, and get the second floor for this in. But yeah, I'm making good progress. No? Also, I'm going to put glass on the front here with the um, actual dynamo that generates the RF from the uh, water flow over here. And I will have to figure out whether it was... what... stop. I'll have to figure out... Uh, which direction the water wheels will have to face to actually transfer their power to the dynamos. But hey, for now I've got a pretty good thing going and I can work from there. See you soon! Okay, so I've been building for a while. This is how far I've gotten so far. Um, the top water wheel is in, got the uh, dynamos installed, which, which are relatively easy to make. It mostly... Oh, darn. It mostly takes a bit of copper and a bit of iron and yeah, those um, LV wire coils are just copper or a stick. Easy enough to make. Anyway, um, I've also uh, set up the walls for the main area and I've uh, put some uh, cobblestone placeholders where I wanted to put the uh, big devices for the top floor. In this case, the plate press and the crusher. Uh, with that the space is mostly occupied but hey I'll be putting a floor below here anyway so that'll be fine. Anyway, um, one more thing to notice is that I built the uh, walls pretty high. That's uh, for a pretty simple reason. 
Well, basically, I wanted the space above this uh, crusher to stand, and only then a layer of support columns to keep the roof from falling on top of me. So, yeah, that's the plan for now. I'm going back to building, and see you soon. Okay, so the main building is finally complete. Just, uh, well, the outside anyway. <laughs> um, put a bit of uh, basalt bricks on the edges to make it look a little nicer. Just a little nicer. Put some uh, lighting on the roof. Added a few skylights so I can at least see if it's uh, day or night while I'm inside. So, next up I'm going to cover up the area around it. Uh, fill it up with dirt and, you know, bury the uh, entrance a bit. I just think it'll look nice. So, off to do that now. Um, sorry for all the quick choppy bits of uh, me building this place. I promise things will get more fun soon. <laughs> anyway, see you guys once I've um, buried enough of the building for now. Well, as you can see, it's now raining, but the uh, entranceway is nice and buried. Done a an attempt at terraforming around my um, industrial build, but yeah, I'm not all that good at it, so. In any case, I still like the way it looks, I still like how the uh, building submerged, but not entirely. So yeah. Next up, I'm going to dig out the lower floor, which is going to be a headache if... Well, if my expectations are correct. In any case, I'll be right back. Okay, um, the interior is more or less done, I just need to fix up this little hole. But if we come down here, towards the staircase, and then head down here... We end up down here. It got a little larger than I uh, initially anticipated, because, well, I wanted this one to be a little higher than the floor, so yeah. And there's a little bit more work to do, mostly filling in the glass, then filling in those holes there. But once that's done, this room is complete. So then it's time to start filling up. Also, notice these uh, little sparkly bits. Yeah, turns out that um, I'm well in range of uh, the subterranean illuminators I placed around the base. And they lit up this place as I was building it. Oh well, it's not like it's any kind of problem. Anyway, before we, before I fill up, uh, actually no, I really should fill up these uh, glass bits first. So yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, fixed up the uh, stuff downstairs. Now it's time to uh, apply the water that will power the factory for the time being. So it's just just goes here, here, and here. And now, if we go downstairs, we can see the water flow down around here, over there, and finally down. All is intended, except for one detail. Well, okay, two details. One, that uh, lamp is not supposed to be there, and two, these are supposed to be turning now. Did I put them in backwards again? Immersive engineering, get your backwards forwards uh, definition straight. I'll be right back. Okay, looks like reversing the direction of the water wheels didn't uh, fix the issue, so maybe they need somewhere to put their energy? I, I'm not sure, but I'm going to investigate that next by making myself somewhere for the water wheels to put their energy. Simple, right? In any case, I'm going to need, well, an LV capacitor from uh, Immersive Engineering, one of these beauties, copper, lead, and iron. Okay, I've got that. Lead, uh, one lead per, uh, one lead per, okay. So let's make three, because go big or go home. Uh, six of those. 
3 times 3 is 9 of these. Then I'll need 3 redstone. And finally I'll need 6 treated wood planks. Easy enough. Then I'll just craft myself a bunch of LP capacitors real quick. Next up though I'm going to need an LV connector and for that I need clay. So uh, since I'm right next to a mesa biome, I really lucked out with the map here, I'm going to grab some uh, clay from there and I'll be back. Okay I've got myself the uh, LV wire connectors. So hook this one up here, put this down here, uh, I believe the loop was the input side. I'll have to check that. Well, that doesn't really seem to be working now, does it? Well, that's a that's an annoyance. I I clearly recall this should be working. Oh well. Um, yeah, I'm going to do a little more research, try out a few other things, and if I figure out something that actually works. I'll be back on screen. Yeah, sorry about the rather jumpy nature of this episode once again. Okay. Anyway, um, I figured out the uh, root cause of my problems and as well the correct way of placing these water wheels. For future reference, when placing a water wheel you gotta face towards the place where you've got the dynamo, else the darn thing want to transfer any power to the connected dynamo and yeah it doesn't work at all. The second problem I had is one of the blocks I placed to guide the water around all the wheels. Basically it's keeping the wheels from turning at all so let's quickly fill these three up. Alright now it's a bit of a you know a bit of surgery to get this to work without uh, come on okay no, almost yeah all right that's the third so yeah that mess aside it's now turning and if we use the engineer's fold meter oh hi Philomena Anyway, the battery is, the capacitor is charging and this setup works. Now all I gotta do is uh, repeat the same uh, stuff with the other two uh, water wheel sets. No, no, young lady. And then we'll have power for days. Again, much like we had last time. Except this time uh, in a little more, well, a slightly bigger package really. But still, same ID, same setup, and same amount of views, which is hopefully a lot. I'll be back once I've uh, set up the other water wheels to actually work. And uh, yeah, then we can finally get started doing something with all this power. So, with all of that done, we now have power from three sets of three water wheels. I kind of need to ho hook up the third set, but that can wait for a bit, because next up we're... Oh hey, there's a butterfly in the system. Poor butterfly. In any case, um, next thing we're gonna do is to finish a few quests, because they give some good hints as to what we can do next. Let me also quickly pick up these uh, lumen turrets. I just put them down during uh, construction, because I didn't want to get eaten by zombies. Um, now let's see what quests we got available. Oh right, I completely forgot I completed that one. Well, nice little bonus. Uh, next up, external heaters. Those are relatively easy to make, uh, thankfully. Let me see. Oh, there we go. Yep, pretty easy to make. Just a copper coil, some more copper and a bit of iron and redstone. Dirt cheap to make, all things considered. So, let's get on with that first.
and there we go um, yeah spread the warmth quest complete I'm getting showered in little accolades here anyhow bunch of redstone a few uh, pistol magazines so next up we're gonna get started on making a plate press which is something I wanted to build anyway so why not do it as part of a quest right um, let me just quickly clean up a little bit of inventory space because as usual stuff is overflowing rapidly and since I have a lot of uh, redstone anyway let's just cube it up like so anyway uh, silver grid gold grid electron grid we're going to need that soon anyway I'm also going to real quickly make a second uh, external heater because later on I want to uh, power the things downstairs the uh, what's the word <laughs> sorry I'm, I'm a bit derpy right now uh, the furnaces I want to power those so I don't have to constantly spend uh, one eighth of all the charcoal I make on powering all of that so yeah another quick fast forward sec Okay, so, with all of that, I should have enough to build half the setup I want to build, and oh darn, it's night. So, yeah, um, the idea is basically that I'm going to take uh, these blocks out, because I'm going to need a bit of space here anyway, uh, place these here, like so, then, where's my hammer? Here. Okay, outputs there knock these down whoops, I'll grab those in a moment so recess them into the wall like so and now I just need to power them which I'll work on in a bit right now I just want to grab my stuff so it doesn't despawn and slash or get taken away by zombies. Okay, and because we're gonna need to power these anyway, like so. Okay, that was Anyway, next thing to do, make another kinetic dynamo, but first drop off some of the stuff in my inventory so I have some space to work with. A few things as annoying as trying to work with a full inventory, right? And I know, kind of deviating from my original plan of making some useful stuff with the uh, power I have now. We'll get to that, we'll get to that. You know, it's in the works, it's not going to spoil or anything. Thing. So yeah, what was the dynamo recipe? Okay, second kinetic dynamo. Why? Because for a different quest, I made one of these windmills. You probably can guess where this is going, right? Because I assume that my that my watch that my viewers <laughs> are decently intelligent people. Yeah, I'm going to wind power my furnace setup for now. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, since I'm going to make a, a quick and dirty, kind of ugly, uh, what's the word? Correction, I'm going to wait until it's day. Okay. So, here's my uh, new windmill. Uh, took a bit of uh, effort to get it to work at all because, well, as you can see, it's huge. And it doesn't seem to be working all that well because, at most, 12 uh, RF per tick is flowing through the system, which I doubt is enough to... Oh, hey, it's slowly building up in here. Well then. Maybe it's... I thought it wasn't working at all, but from the looks of it, 
it actually works. Well, we would have sunk. And yes, I'm using that as a word now. Thunk. No need to thunk me. <laughs> any case, um, in any case, from the looks of it, it's going to be a pretty slow system, but hey, free cooking, I'm okay with that. I can wait. I'm a patient man, more or less. Um, that said, for now, I gotta get working on that steel engineering component, because, well, quests demand it. So, let's, uh, let's get on with that, shall we? Alright, got the heavy engineering block, so that's one part of the quest. Oh, hey, that's the entire quest done. <laughs> well, who would have guessed? Finally, a proper bucket. Well, I'm going to need a little more stuff to get that, uh, that plate press going, so let's get on with that too. Because, hey, we're on a roll here anyway, so let's keep that, uh, let's keep that going. As you can hear, Philomena wants some attention. I'll give it to her later. But for now, um, the uh, what's the word? Metal press. All right. To make a metal press, you need uh, let's see, one piston, three steel scaffolding, one conveyor, two conveyor belts, and one heavy engineering block. Easy enough to do. So to get uh, Okay, no. I'm just going to go silent for a little while because I need to focus to do this right and that I have a little that I have a darling little bird uh, whistling for attention the entire time isn't exactly helping either but yeah oh darn I forgot to take my leather along or maybe I, I just used it all up So, one quick trip to my old base later to get some of the leather I knew I've been leaving there for a while now. I have my conveyor belts. I also brought in the uh, tanning rack. Let's see. Oh, leather, leather apparently tans pretty quickly. Oh then, nice. In any case, uh, got enough leather for a second set of conveyor belts because I'm going to need a few anyway. So, and there we go. Plenty of conveyor belts. For the time being, and <laughs> probably for a long time in general. Anyway, um, I got that, I got that, I got that. I only need the steel scaffolding. Which is where the, where the expensive part of this build comes in, because it takes a lot of steel to make one set of steel scaffolding. Need, let's see, three times, no, two times six um, steel rods. Then you need, that's already 12 uh, steel, because, <laughs> sorry. Getting steel scaffolding is a bit expensive because for starters you need three steel for the scaffolds itself, then you need three steel fence, which you create in um, lots of two, but which takes six steel rods to make, and one set of steel rods is another two steel ingots. Since you have to make two lots of uh, steel uh, fences, yeah, steel fences, it takes another six rounds of this recipe, meaning you're another 12 steel short afterwards. Well, another 12 steel down. Grand total? 15 steel just to make the steel scaffolding we need. And uh, well, I think I have that much. Yeah, just barely. Okay, and that's our six steel scaffolding. I'm gonna have to drop them for a moment because I'm my inventory is completely full. Good thing I've got my chests right here. And but yeah, that's all I really need to make myself a plate press. Which is nice. 
Um, now that I'm up here, I'm also going to make a few quick... Uh, there's, the, there's the stuff. I'm also going to make a quick pair of crates. Wooden storage crate. Which will be useful in a sec. Like I said earlier, I was going to put the uh, plate press here anyway, so just quickly clearing out the space there. Oh. Darn lag. At an inopportune moment. So then... Oh, oh you can climb on those. Inconvenient, actually. But anyway, um, this one's got a face down, so whack it a few times with the engineer's hammer to make it point down. Put this one on top. Right. Oh, right. Uh, it needs some of these. Okay, roads nowhere. Okay, and then if we hammer that, we got ourselves a plate. Well, metal press. <laughs> uh, names are funny. Anyway, put one in here, put one here. Hopefully, I can put uh, one box there and one box there. And then just lead it around like so. Oh, that's not what I want. That's what I want. Um, yeah, that should be enough to have a plate press ready. All I really need to do next is to hook it up to some power. Um, yeah, I guess I should have seen that one coming. While I'm at it... I'm also going to make an exit point there, so I can hook this one up there, and well, so this one's going to move anyway, so I'm not going to hook it up to that just yet. Okay, that's linking. Let's put one up here, connect like so, and that should be a a basic metal press setup ready to go. Except for one detail. It needs something to press down. As in, it needs a shape to press. I also may have to uh, push it out one further because these wooden storage crates may need a hopper underneath to get going. But for now, we at least have the basics going for our automation setup. And I have a power source for the uh, early game. So, I think here is a pretty good time to wrap up. I probably uh, ran a bit long, even with all the jump cuts and speed ups. So, yeah, I'm going to call it a day here. Um, next time we'll get to creating a little more capacity, get those uh, lasers I was talking about earlier today. And, uh, yeah. All in all, I hope you're still enjoying this. Um, sorry that it's kind of a rehash of what I did last time, but hey, don't change a winning formula, right? But yeah, Betting K, ending the episode here, and see you next time.